can use me. Amen. If you want to be used of the Lord, you're going to have to give yourself away. You're going to have to give yourself to him. Amen. God gave us his best. Amen. And in return, we ought to give God our best. Amen. Paul said, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. John said, I must decrease that he might increase. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ live within me. Now the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me. I said, Christ loved us today and gave himself for us. Amen. Wow. I don't know about you saints, but do you feel the love of God in the sanctuary today, the way that I feel it? It's like a rushing mighty river, just flowing. Amen. The sisters sang heaven down. I, yes, they did amen. Glory to God. They, I said they sang heaven down. We got a fresh download from heaven today. Amen. Jesus is in the sanctuary today. Glory to God. I'd like to thank Dr. Mike Yeager, the First Lady, for inviting me to share a word with you. I'd like to thank Pastor Townsend, my pastor, for uh, being here this, this, this afternoon. Amen. The word of God is rich. He said, the Lord is rich to all who call upon him. Amen. Someone said, you can't, you can't lose. You cannot lose with the stuff we use. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have the word of God. We have the word of life. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Give an iron to God. If we go into the word of God this afternoon, let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I come to your throne of grace, giving myself away, Lord God. You said, come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, Father, I thank you, Father God, for the help at this hour. I thank you, Father God, that you said that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. And I thank you for providing food for the saints to eat. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we break forth the bread of life, amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let us turn, if you have your Bibles, to the book of Hebrews. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and let's just read on down and, and in to verse 6, including verse 6. The, and we're talking about growing in the anointing of God through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Growing in the grace of God, growing in the anointing of God through the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the word of the Lord reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. By it, by, for by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. You know that Abel's blood cried from the ground once Cain had slew him. 
It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that when he should not see death, he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, are you listening to me, beloved? But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's why the Bible declares that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things that we're seeking him for shall be added unto us. How many of us know this afternoon that God knows what, we're, what we stand in need of? Amen. The qualifying question, though, to this particular verse in, in, uh, in, in chapter 11, verse 6, the qualifying question is, how do you come to God? Now, if I was to go to a neighbor's house or a friend's house, I would know the address, and I would know how to get there. It would be no problem with me coming through the house because I know how to get there. But how do we come to God? Is he, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So then the qualifying question is, how is it that we come to God and how is it that we come to him by faith? To get the answer or to get the reward that is needed, that is requested, that we seek. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So if we don't know how to get to God, then we're not going to get an answer from God. Right. Amen. Right. Chapter 4 of, of the same book of Hebrews declares it, it says it this way. Chapter 4, first, first verse. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The word will never profit you if you don't mix it with faith with what you have heard. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. You have to mix faith when you come to God with what you heard. And how many of us know what we hear in the Lord we ought to speak? So the problem with the church today is we're, speaking everything, we're saying everything but what God said and wondering why we're not getting results. But yet God said, that he's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. That the promise of God are yes and amen, but yet we're not getting any answers. Could it be because we're not coming to God in faith of the word? He says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and when we come to God we got to come to God bringing the word of God mixing the word of God with faith how many of us know this afternoon that faith worketh by love amen I said faith worketh by love you can't live on any type way and then come to God and expect to get an answer expect to see results you got to walk in love so when I came in the sanctuary I felt Felt the love of God all over the place. And the sisters like two angels just sang heaven right on down. Amen. Before, before the service even 
God, the role that I'm standing here in tears, they sang heaven down. Felt the love of God. Amen. We got to love God with all our heart, mind, and strength, and then love our neighbor as ourselves to get answers from God. Upon these two hang the law of the prophets. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about growing in God's grace, growing in the anointing of God, being led of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. You're not going to get no answer from God except you come to him by faith. And when you come to him, you got to know how to come to him, church. You can't just come to God any old way. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, James said. Amen. You got to come knowing who you are in the kingdom of God. John declares, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has suffered violent, but now the violent take it by force. It's yours. Glory to God. I said you are covenant partners with Jesus Christ. Amen. You have the word of God. You got God's promise that he'll never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the age. He said, I'm the God that healeth thee. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Who in his own self bared our sin, in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by his stripes. We're healed. By his stripes, we're healed. But we got to come before the Lord. Amen. And we got to come by and through faith. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them. In them. These were folk that knew faith. In them that heard it. Oh, it's one thing to be around the camp of the Lord and to sit at the feet of Jesus and miss God altogether, Martha. Come on here. Any Marthas out there? <laughs> Amen. He said, he said, come on alongside Mary. Amen. She chose what's best. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let me not call out names. You know, because when you start calling out names, you either miss somebody or you get somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So, so, so we got to mix faith with what we heard concerning the word if we want to get God's attention. Amen? Amen. How many know God loves our attention? Amen. Just like he loves to get our attention, God loves our attention. He loves our audience. He loves our praise. He loves our worship. Glory to God. He'll send the anointing right away. He's not holding back, church. We're holding back, might I submit. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible declares, beloved, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, says, Paul says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And that you were bought with a price? Glory to God. You're bought with a price. You're bought with the precious blood of Jesus. God in you. God inside minded. When is the church going to get to the place where we're God conscious this 24 hours, seven days a week? We're God conscious in our sleep. Hey, Amen. What? Paul says, know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God? And you are not your own. We don't have a right to give somebody a piece of our mind. Come on here. The only mind that we have a right to give is the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, geez, that's, that, that brother done touched off a nerve. And I, I, brother, brother told, I just had to let him know how I feel. Uh, you know, vengeance isn't yours. He said, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, saith the Lord. We're bought with a price. 
Therefore, he said, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In your body and in your spirit, which are God. In your soul and in your spirit, which belongs to God. See, saints, we're made without hands today. We're made by God Almighty. Amen. Glory to God. We glorify God in all things. In all things. In times of plenty, in times of famine, in times of trial, in times of tribulation, when things are good, when things are not so good, glory to God. We give God all the glory. Amen up in the house. Glory. Amen. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. Ever present with him. Always there. Glory. He's always there. But we, beloved, we have to make it practical that our primary purposes in life is to be filled with all of the fullness of God. Everything else ought to be secondary. Our primary purpose is to fulfill God's word in the earth. Amen. To preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. To seek first his kingdom. Amen. Seeking first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6.33 says. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It says uh, in verse 34, it says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Come on here. We get caught up with so much cares and concerns and worried about this and, and worried about that. The Bible declares that we're to cast all our care upon Jesus because he careth for us. Amen. Come on here. We can't add one cubit to our stature. We can't keep one hair from, from turning. Well, I can't keep any now because I already got any. But, but we can't keep one hair from turning white. So we cast that care upon Jesus. We're not built for it. Jesus took it to Calvary with him. You know, he, he said that in, in uh, Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So why are we carrying it? Why are we carrying worries? Why are we stressing out? Why are we having anxiety attacks? That's not God. Come on, saints. I said, that's not God. We're to cast that on him and give it to Jesus. Amen. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, once again, we are healed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're to take no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We don't have to worry about that. There's always going to be evil going on out there. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're citizens of a different place. Right. Amen. Of a different home. Right. Amen. Right. We, you know, uh, when we think about the cares of this world and things that are going on, you know, don't let those things distract you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let these things uh, 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 get you down. That's right. God has everything in control. Amen. Oh, I know it looks like sin is abounding. But the Bible declares where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Amen. Glory to God. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. We're selling God short. We're selling the power of God short. The grace of God always abounds far exceedingly above anything that we can ask or think. The grace of God. Amen. Let us turn to the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 8. Amen. Glory to God. Are, you, are we getting anything from this this afternoon? Amen. Amen. If we're to grow in God's grace, we're to grow in that anointing by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We must submit ourselves to God. We must resist the devil, and then he'll flee from us. Amen. Says, Thou believe that there's one God, thou doeth well. So does the devil, and trembles. 
He trembles at the word of God. We ain't got no sons to skeeve up in here, right? He said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? When you come in the name of the Lord, and you've been walking with God, and you know who you are in God, you tell that devil in the name of Jesus, I command you in Jesus' name, take your hands off of God's property. Amen. It's time that we enforce our God-given rights. We enforce the word. We're enforcers of God's word. God's not calling wimps. He's calling warriors. He's not calling sissies. He's calling soldiers to step up and declare the word of the Lord and to tell the devil and his imps where they can go. Take a hike out to the abyss. Oh, I, I tell them real quick. Take a hike out to the abyss. While, you, while, while you're swimming out there, put a millstone about your neck and go, go to the bottom. <laughs> Amen. We got to take authority. He said, behold, I give you authority. I give you, I give it to you. So if we don't enforce what he's given us, then the devil has a right to run ship shot all over us. God has already done all he's going to do about the devil. He gave us Jesus. Jesus divested himself of all his divinity, came here to earth as a man, walked the earth as a man under the unction of the Holy Spirit, and then when he left, he said, Greater works than these shall ye do because I go to the Father. What are we doing with the power of God? Oh, but he was, he was the son of God. See, see, that, 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 see that, now that's an excuse. I just said he divested himself of all of his divinity. And he became a servant. He, it, says, it says in the word of God that, that Jesus... So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, 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 who was in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made no reputation of it, but took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient unto God, even obedient to the death of the cross. Everyone has a cross to bear today. Amen. Everyone has a, every saint of God has a, has a cross to bear today. The world doesn't know, but they have a cross. Now, they can make a decision, because it's all about choices, Pastor Tom. They can either accept God's plan of salvation, or they don't have to. But then they'll suffer the consequences if they don't. Have the form of godliness, but not denying the power thereof. God said, from them, turn away. Amen. He said, if you be... I would that you'd rather be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Amen. Thank God for 1 John 1 9. Thank God for 1 John 1 9, Pastor Tom. You know, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hey, there used to be a song back out in the day that said, Man, ain't that good news? Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at verse 26 of chapter 8 of the book of Romans. It says, likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Oh, glory to God. I hear that verse in Proverbs that the, that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. Amen. And it says in verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. How many things? All things. Come on here. Brother Marshall, do you really mean all? That's what the word of God, it says all things work together for good. The reason why we don't experience the all is because we don't seek God within the all. Amen. To experience the all things that God is talking about here, you have to experience him in the all. God, I'll put you back to remembrance of what you said to me. 
You said that all things work together for my good because I love you. God, how is this particular situation going to work towards my good? How can I work this situation towards my good? Now what am I doing? I'm seeking first his kingdom towards that situation. What am I doing? I'm coming to God. Well, how, am I, how are you coming to God, Marshall? I thought you'd never ask. It says, know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them. So I come to myself. Why, Marshall? Because I confessed him as my Lord and Savior. I invited him where? In me, into my heart. With the mouth, confession is made of salvation. When you, when, you, when, you, when you receive, as in Romans chapter 10, when it says, the word is nigh thee, is in thy heart, in thy mouth, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God has raised thee from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why? For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. I come to myself. Or are you listening to me, old prodigals out there? The prodigal came to himself. He said, when I came to myself, wait a minute, I got better at my father's house than I have here. He came to himself. And when you come to yourself, you come into the spirit of God that lives within you. And you're saying, God, what about this situation? And God is saying, all things work together. And I will work all things for your good. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chapter 8, verse 26. And reading on down. It says, verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Do you love God this afternoon? Yes, to them who called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed into the image of of his son into the image of Christ be conformed into the word of Christ every word I put out has an image if I say light bulbs you see an image <laughs> if I say car you see an image <laughs> we're to be conformed into the image of Christ and what is the image of Christ God's word Revelation declared they called him the word of God amen king of kings and lord of lords Amen. Glory to God. Let me contain myself here. The young man is coming out of me. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I love the word of the Lord. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, now listen to this. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also he called. And whom he called, he justified. Isn't that good news? That your sins and transgressions are blotted out. He said, who I called, I justified them. Oh, they may have done something wrong, but you better keep your mouth off them. Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. The cardinal answers to, answers to God. Amen. And them he justified them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things then? That's a qualifying question. That's a good qualifying. What, what are we going to say about it? The only thing you can say, if God be for me, or if God be for us, who can be against us? Think about that, saints, today. Think, really think about that. If God is for you, and he is, who or what can be against you? You and God can take on any army and come up victorious and collect the spoils at the end. Because when you take on an army, when you go through something, God got some spoils waiting for you from the adversary. <laughs> Sometimes it might take you three days to collect all of it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's what he did uh, in Jehoshaphat's day. Hey, man, glory to God. They were camped around the cliff of Ziz. Thought they were going to pull a sneak attack on Jehoshaphat. But the man of God went before the Lord. And God told him where they were at. And then God told him what to do. And then God sent ambushment that they end up massacring themselves. And so great was the slaughter that it took three days to carry up all the spoil. Man, did they have a party. Glory to God. Hey, <laughs> collecting all that loot. Amen. Hey, Glory to God. 
If God be for us, who can be against us? Now get this. He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he, how shall God, how shall he, not with him, with Christ, give us all things freely? Now, 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 once again, the qualifying question that, that we need to understand is that you have to say something. If you go back to, to, uh, 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 to verse 31, it says, what shall we say to these things? You have to say something to it. You have to say something to it, saints. When Jesus came aptly that he might find figs upon that, that fig tree and there, was not, there wasn't any, his response to it was, no man eat of thee hereafter forever. He cursed it. Now, I, I don't know about you, but, but when, I was, <laughs> when I was out there, when someone cursed me because they were hot, they're kind of in a temper, temperamental way towards me, sis. You, have, you know, you used to say, oh, I curse you. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was upset that that tree didn't have no figs on it. The Bible said he hungered. And when he cursed it, the Bible says the disciples heard it. And when they came back the next day, my Bible says that that fig tree was dried up from the roots up. And Peter recalls, saying, Lord, you cursed the fig tree. It's dried up from the roots up. He said, you can have faith of God. The King James says have faith in God. But you can have the faith of God. You could do the same thing as what Jesus was saying. You can operate in, in what they call quantum physics as far as time is concerned. Because see, what happened was he, that thing dried up within 24 hours. Come on here. Time was like, shoo. But see, we, f we don't fully understand that time is called to serve us. We think we're servants of time. You know, we even, you know, born uh, 1958, hyphenated bar, deceased, you know. Come on here. Time is called to serve us. Often said, time and gravity are the two angels that God called to serve me. While we look not the things that are temporal, we look at the things that are eternal. Is time temporal? We don't have to look to that. Come on, saints. We don't have to look to that. All things are in God's hand concerning the saints. You hear that song when we were kids? He got the whole world in his hand. Amen. Gravity is the servant that God selected to keep me from floating out in space. It serves me. It's an angel that serves me. Gravity is the thing that keeps me balanced in my mind. It serves me. If you find a person without gravity up here, look out. Glory to God. So, so he's given us all things freely, but we have to say something to it. And what we have to say is the word of God to whatever situation that is represented that is not of God. We have to speak to it. We have to speak to it. And then we enforce our right as God given, uh, our God given right as born again believers. We enforce that. Amen. And so it says here, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution or famine, nakedness, pearl, sword, as it is written? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. 
We are counted as sheep before the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Through all these things, all the things that we call to go through, you must remember, saints, we're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Uh, I often describe that as the, the, the prize fighter. You know, the prize fighter gets up there and him, that guy, they get in there, him and the enemy, they go at it. He end up knocking the enemy out. He gets the prize. He gets the purse. The wife, she's more than a conqueror because she didn't throw a lick, but she gets to spend all of it. She gets to, that's what I say, more than a conqueror. We're more than conquerors through Jesus that loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> it says in verse 38, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. When you love God, when you love God, there's nothing that you're called to go through that you can't, that you're not equipped to deal with in God. And not only equipped to deal with, uh, that you're also able to put that situation in its place through God. Because God said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. The things that you, you feel like, you okay, I'm up against it, God. Okay, I can't move this. God says, I got your back. Yes, sir. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Yes, so when we go to God and we say, God, you said. When we go inside to God and we say, God, you said. We bring his word back to him. Uh -huh. You will rebuke the devourer for my sake. I remember when my son Malachi had nephritis, a kidney disease, and his kidneys were shutting down, and he swole up. I got a call from the, 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 the elementary school, and, and Mr. Leonard, you need to come get your son. Something's wrong with him, and we don't know what's wrong with him. And when I got to the school and seen my son, the way he was was not the way we sent him to school. But just that quick, everything swole up. His, his kidneys were not passing, so he bloated as a result. And so I said, what happened? He said, we don't know. I said to his teacher that day, Take a look at him. She said, what? I said, look at him. I said, because God's going to heal my boy. You hear I came before the Lord? I said, because God's going to heal my boy. She said, Mr. Leonard, now don't get excited. I said, I'm not getting excited. I'm saying, look at him. I grabbed my son by the hand. He was in kindergarten, and we left. Got the report that it was nephritis. I was working at Never Get... Pastor Tony, I was working at your county prison then. And I sat on the blocks one night on, on some milk crates with my head down, bowed to his praying and began to weep before the Lord. And uh, one of my co-workers said, Marshall, what's going on? What's wrong with you? I said, my son has a disease. I don't know what it is. Can't call it by name. Uh, and I said, the doctor said there's no cure. So uh, he said, a disease? I said, yeah, it's a kidney disease. So then my friend said, oh, that's nephritis. I'm like, yeah, how do you know? He said, well, my Philip is a twin, and he had it. It's, a, it's an occurrence that, that happens in twins. Uh, uh, so I said, your Philip is a twin, and he had it? Okay. Well, God has no respect to a person. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I say that because my friend Harry is white. His son is white. God has no respect to a person. Come on, there ain't no, ain't no racial overtones up in here. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world, but through him that the world might be saved. He that believeth not, he, he that believeth is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. Long story short, God healed my son. He is now playing at a prestigious college, basketball. Amen. Whom the son is set free 
It's free indeed. Every time the adversary came to me and said, I got you now, I will quote that scripture in Malachi. That's my son's name, Malachi. I will quote Malachi. God, you said, you, chapter 3, you said you would vow for my sake. You said that you would do it. You know, you know with men, things are impossible. With God, all things are possible. So when I, when I, when I want to get into possibility thinking, church, here's how I do it. Amen. Now I'm in possibility mode. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Nothing can stop me because a man stands tossed when he's on his knees. Amen. Nothing can stop me when I'm in possibility mode. Amen. Amen. If I can't get it done up, I get it done down. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You want to always enter into possibility mode. Just go in prayer. That's why he said men are always pray and not faint. Amen. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. This afternoon here, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of the message that the Lord has given me. Amen. But we come into God. We come before the presence of the Lord. Amen. The Bible declares that they were made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. So when we pray, we seal that prayer with the blood of Jesus and then we declare that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. See, when we come before the presence of the Lord, we're coming to decree what God has said. So we come in and decree what God has said, and then we declare what he has told us to say. We decree and we declare. We decree what the word says, and then we declare the devil, we, we tell the devil he can go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Without faith, church, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Give you honor, glory, and praise for your word today. Father, we ask if there be anyone under the sound of my voice that might be experiencing an affliction of any type, that might be in a place where they have went back on God, went back on the word, that they would just now come forward and and, and, and that the ministers within the house today would also come to, to uh, help pray for these individuals that God would get the glory through Jesus, that God would get the victory, even as he got back when he opened the, the blind man's eyes and you know they went through the whole spiel about who sinned. Was it this young man? Was it his parents? And Jesus said neither that the glory of God might be manifest. Amen. Amen. When you come back before the Lord, it's only that the glory of God should be manifested in your life. A greater manifestation of God in our lives. That that's what we ought to be craving for today, church. A greater manifestation of God in our life. A greater manifestation of his spirit to set the captives free, to recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those which are bruised, to be able to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. God bless. God bless you. You may come forward.